time lapses are great fun to make as long as you don't overdo it. It can aid in your filmmaking, from landscape cloud shots and cityscapes to people, traffic and construction shots. There's loads of ways to shoot them, but in this video, I'm gonna show you the method I use to make these time lapses. Before that though, if you've not already done so, why not subscribe and hit that little notification button. And let's get right to it. What equipment do you need? There are some obvious pieces of gear that you'll need for your time-lapse projects. Use a heavy-duty tripod. If your tripod is not sturdy enough, you can hang your camera bag on it or use stones to make it more stable. This is essential for long exposures. I've also used a gorilla pod in the past. This is great for low angles and mounting it to places on the fly. Definitely more portable than a heavy-duty tripod. I've used this all the time when I'm traveling. Extra memory cards. Extra batteries, sometimes I use a USB battery bank to give me that extra power when shooting long time lapses. Switch your image preview off as this will save a little bit of battery power if you're doing particular long sessions. You don't need that LCD permanently on. Make sure your lens and sensors are clean. I've ruined shoots where I've had annoying hairs or specks of dust on the lens. So take the time to clean your gear before you shoot. To achieve professional results in time lapses, use the camera in manual mode and shoot raw files. This will give you greater control over your camera and during post-production it will make your life easier. The camera is taking shots over a long period of time, so if you use auto, the camera will try and correct every change of light and the colour temperature between each shot, so avoid auto at all costs. Let's assume you want your final video to be in 24 frames per second. 24 shots will give you one second of footage, so for 20 second time lapse, you're going to need 480 photos. The interval between each shot will determine the speed of the final video. The longer the interval, the quicker the movement of the elements of the shot will be, and vice versa. Here are a few suggestions of interval times depending on what scene you're going to be shooting. Clouds moving normally, interval of 5 seconds. Clouds moving really fast, interval of maybe 3 seconds. People walking down the street, interval of 2 seconds. The path of the sun on a clear day, an interval of 30 seconds. Nighttime time lapses, stars or moons and all that stuff, interval of 20 to 30 seconds. So let's talk briefly on shutter speed. If you can, grab yourself a variable ND filter and slow down your shutter speed. This will give you a nice motion blur to the time lapse and stops it from looking like a stop frame animation. Depending on the situation, I've sometimes used shutter speeds of 2 and lower. Don't be afraid to get some test shots before you start the process. Now once you have all your photos on your computer, import them all into Lightroom. What we're going to do now is edit one of those photos in the middle of the batch and then import the settings from that photo to the rest of the batch. Now I'm picking a photo in the middle of the batch because if there's any subtle changes in light from the beginning and the end, overall it will give me more of a consistent shot in the final time lapse. Alternatively, for day to night or night to day time lapses or more options to tweak, have a look at LR time lapse. It's amazing for keyframe and grading too. It's the holy grail for editing all time lapse. We'll save that for another video maybe. Anyway, make your tweaks to your selected photo. Once you're happy, copy the settings and paste it to the rest of the batch. From here, export your photo to JPEG, create a new folder and call it tweaked time lapse. And then wait. Maybe grab yourself a cuppa or something stronger. It's going to take a while as you're exporting hundreds of photos at once. When that export is finally done, we're going to import them into a new Premiere Pro project. Hit Apple or Control i This is the important part. Select the very first image of the time-lapse sequence and make sure you tick the image sequence, then hit Import. This is going to import the whole sequence into a combined clip, which makes life a lot easier. Create a 1080p sequence and drag the clip into the timeline Right click and select set to frame size. This will scale the clip down to the 1080 sequence. Now from here we can tidy up the beginning and end, speed the clip up to the desired length if needed or even add a bit of movement to the sequence with keyframes. Now this time lapse is a little too long for my taste so I'm going to speed it up so it's around 5 to 10 seconds long. Because the sequence is in 1080 we can scale the time lapse without losing a lot of quality. Now I like to zoom out a lot with my time lapses with keyframes as it makes it more interesting to watch. So let's zoom in a touch and when we're happy, click the little stopwatch next to the scale button. Then scrub through to the end of the clip and zoom back to the original value. And now you have a subtle zoom out effect using keyframes. When you're happy, set your in and out points and export it to the desired format. 
Just want to give a shout out to my main man Ben for helping me get some additional behind the scenes shots for this video. He's an awesome photographer and you should go check out his work on Instagram, Frames by Ben. The light was pretty good on the day so he also found the time to take a few portrait shots too. So to see these photos from the day, go check him out over on his Instagram. And we're done. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do. Turn that thumb blue and don't forget to subscribe and um, I'll see you next time.